Let's make a VR game together and in this new episode we are going to add a start menu to our game. As always feel free to subscribe down below for the next episode about adding sound effect to our interactable and if you'd like to support my work and get access to the Result Unity project I will leave in the description my Patreon. But without further ado let's get started. Okay so here we are where we were left at the end of last episode but now to make a start menu I'm going to use an awesome asset which is free for everybody and which is made by an awesome VR developer called Valem Tutorials. So if you are not aware I've previously released a project called the VR Game Jam template which is like a template for you to use for any VR game and which contains a start scene like this with a start button, an option button, an about and a quit and with here the game title. So why not use it for our own let's make a VR game project. Oh and of course this project is available as I told you for everybody and you can directly download it from this GitHub page. Okay so once it is downloaded you can basically go in the start scene and right click go then to export package and you should see all of what this scene contains. We have the audio that we want, we have some fonts, some materials. Here for the plugins as I already have uh, the Oculus Ends installed on the Let's Make a VR game project. Let's uncheck it. For the prefab we can then uncheck the same for the samples which are already present in the other project. We can keep the script, we can then remove the XRI example which I've already implemented and we can simply click here on export to export it as a Unity package. And once that's done, you should have a Unity package containing everything to set up a start scene that we should be able to drag in our project. So let's simply take it and drag it over there in the project files. And as you can see, we can have a look at everything that it's contained and we can click on import. Now to save you some time, instead of downloading the whole GitHub project and exporting the package yourself, I will leave in the description below a direct download link to this package for you to make sure that everything is working. And as you can see, I have a warning, but no error, which means that there is no issues after downloading this package and we can get started on our start scene so if we go to scene, there it is, we can see here our start scene. We have still our sample scene, which is the scene that we currently have here opened. So let's simply rename the sample scene by to spaceship scene. Beautiful. And now if we double click on the start scene, there you go, we can see it and we can then click on import TMP essentials. This is for the text mesh pro. So as you can see, there is a little bug. We cannot see here the text on the button, but don't worry, simply close and reopen the project and it should be fixed. And there you go, after closing and reopening the project, as you can see, we are able to see the text for all of the button. That's perfect. But now let's set up this start scene for our project. The first thing we want is to add this, this scene in the build settings. For this, let's go to file, Build settings, we can see here our spaceship scene. So let's simply drag our start scene over there and make sure that the start scene is above here, the spaceship scene. This way, when we build our game, the first thing that will be launched is the start scene. Okay, so now that we are in the start scene, let's click on the game title and let's rename here the game title by the title of our game, which is Space Scrapper. Now the font is a bit too big, so let's maybe reduce it. We can tweak uh, this uh, UI as we want. So for example, let's change here the color to blue like this. Now, another thing that I'm going to change is the skybox. So if you remember, we have another skybox that is used in the spaceship scene and which is the Milky Way that we can find in Let's Make a VR Game materials. And here it is, Milky Way skybox. So let's drag it instead. There you go, it is beautiful. Now for the ground here, let's maybe change the color of the ground not to gray but directly to black and let's change the blending mode to alpha. This will add more opacity on the ground which I think looks great. But as you can see with the change of opacity from the ground we kind of have an issue here with the transparent layer. So a technique that we can do is simply go on the game menu ground here and for the sorting priority, we can reduce it to minus one. And as you can see, everything works now. The UI shows in front of the ground. Okay, now let's try this menu directly. So let's click on play to find out if this still works. 
Okay, so as you can see, everything seems to work. I am here in VR, I have some VR ends, and I can point array to the UI. So for example, if I click on option, I can see some option to control the volume of the game. And if I go to about, oh, here it is a bit weird because the UI is dark and it's not saying the correct thing. So we will be able to change this later on. Now we have the quit button, which will be able to quit the game once we build it, of course. But now if I click on start, as you can see, I fade. And I currently jump into the next scene. That's awesome. So right now, with what we've tested, we know that everything is working great, which is a good news. The thing that I can change is going here under the about. Then on text, we can change here the little text. I'm going to change its color to white. And as you can see, this will allow us to kind of better see here the text when it's showing. Now we can change the inside of this text. Mine is, this game was made by Valem Tutorials for the Let's make a VR game series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There you go. Now we can just uncheck the about and show the main menu over there like it was the case before. And there we go. Now at this point, we have a functioning start menu that we can play at the start of the game to be able to go to the main spaceship scene. But of course, something that we want to do is go back to the start scene once the game is finished. So let me show you how we can do this. Okay, so to go back to the start scene, once we finish the game in the spaceship scene, we need two things. The scene transition manager here, that is able to transition the player to one scene to another. And finally here, if I go under the XR origin, we have the fader screen, which is able, as the name suggests, to fade the screen. So what I'm going to do is go to our spaceship scene, right there. I'm going then to go to prefab, and you should see here the transition manager that we can drag in the scene. Beautiful. As you can see, it needs here the fading screen from the fader screen. So let's go under our XR origin, locate our main camera, and drag the fader screen under the main camera. Now for the fitting to work, make sure here that the position Z value, so 0 0.015, is bigger here than the clipping near plane, which is the case here as the near clipping plane value is at 0 0.01. So 0 0.015 is higher. Now, as you can see, by default, we can fade the screen when we start the game, which is really nice. So for example, if I click on play, you should see the screen go from black to transparent. Beautiful. Day now, in my case, I'm simply going to set the fade duration a bit quicker, like one, for example. And now the last thing that we need to do is, of course, to call this scene transition when we finish the game. But with the awesome timeline system that we've made, it is very easy to do. So if we go to our narrative story and that we open back the timeline manager by going to sequence right there, we can call here the scene transition with a signal like we have done for the different part of our storyline. So I'm going to right click add a signal track, then select our transition manager. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to assign the fade screen. So let's do this now that we've added the fader screen before. Okay, so to add a signal receiver, let's add component, add a signal receiver. We can click on add reaction, then create signal and call the signal end of game. Beautiful, for this signal, we can then click on plus, drag our scene transition manager, and then go to Scene Transition Manager, go to Scene Async. Now here, the index that you can put is the index of the build index of this scene. Now, if we go to File, Build Settings, you can see that the Start Scene Build Index is at zero and that the Spaceship Scene is at one. So make sure to set it to zero here to be able to go directly to the Start Scene. Now, if we go back to our timeline, we can drag the Transition Manager on the Signal Receiver Right click, go to add signal emitter and select for the emit signal the end of game. And now you can place this anywhere you want. In my case, I'm going to place it a bit before the end of the voice line because there is a fading screen that will occur before we switch the scene. So it will be perfectly timed if we just place it just a few seconds before. 
Now, if you have multiple scenes, you can, of course, tweak here the transition to go to any index scene that you want. Now, anyway, let's go back to our game windows, click on maximize and then click on play. Okay, guys, I'm almost at the end of the game. So I just finished playing all of the sequence. Now, let's see if I reach the teleporter ahead, if I'm able to directly automatically go back to the start scene. Let's see. And there you go. Congratulations, that did not work. Energy empty. Looks like we are stuck again. Maybe you should have used it for the beer cooler. Aha aha. And beautiful, as you can see, it worked. We have successfully fade to the starting scene. That's amazing. And now we can still see all of the option, validate. We can, by the way, see the new about that we've created earlier. And if we click on start again, we are ready to jump again in the game. That's Day awesome. 117, we are still stuck in this space void. And there you go, guys. As you can see, with the VR template, we were able to quickly set up a nice little start menu for our game, which turned out super cool. Now, we are almost at the end, two more episodes to go, and in the next one, we are going to add sound effect to our interactable. So make sure to subscribe, and if you'd like to support my work and get access to the Result Unity project, I will leave my Patreon in the description. Thank you for watching, see you soon, bye-bye.